What is up, everyone? Today, my January wrap-up, which is going to be very short, and my pretty ambitious February TBR, especially considering how little I read in January. So here's to hopefully reading more pages. First, the Discord buddy read with Anitha on my Discord. Yes, we've got Assassin's Apprentice, which was the January read, and then the sequel, book two, Royal Assassin, which I am going to be reading in February. So yeah, this is my first experience reading Robin Hobb, and I like the writing style. It's definitely more classic than most of the books I've been picking up. It felt like the Ember Blade in terms of the writing style, but it's a little different because this story we are following around a character named Fitz, and it's him in the future telling his story from his past. So in this book, it starts when he's like five years old and goes to maybe around when he's, I don't know, 15 or 16. So we definitely get intimate experiences with Fitz, or at least a intimate retrospective. And I feel like Fitz is a pretty reliable narrator, but what do I know? Maybe I'm wrong. But he seems to have well-differentiated feelings and views about his thoughts when he was a child growing up. And yeah, there's definitely a lot of emotions that Fitz goes through, but maybe it's less intimate because everything he's going through was in the past, whereas in other types of books and in their writing style, uh, the characters are going through it right now, so maybe it feels more intimate. But yeah, I really liked book one, and we had a lot of good fantasy tropes. We had, like, kind of a school-ish setting. We had assassins. Obviously, that's kind of a trope. We had a magic system that kind of felt like uh, the Force from Star Wars, but in a more fantasy setting. So that was pretty cool. I feel like we're still peeling the layers back of the magic system, but I'm excited to explore that more. And yeah, join my Discord if you want to talk about these books and listen to me as I go through this series. There's definitely a lot of uh, tragic things that happen in Assassin's Apprentice, so prepare yourself if you have not read it. Up next, I read Golden Sun, book two in the Red Rising trilogy, and I'm going to be reading Morning Star this month. Golden Sun, amazing. I love it so much. It might even be better than Red Rising, which I also loved and gave five stars. These books are just so fast-paced. There's never a dull moment, certainly, and sometimes I kind of want it to slow down and maybe, like, gather my thoughts and try to make my own conspiracies and stuff, but I do like the fast paced here, and I think it's done very well, and I'm just captivated by it. Not everything has to be a long, drawn-out epic fantasy. Sometimes you just want action-packed, sci-fi, revolution story, overthrowing the oppressors, just stuff like that. It's very good. It's all good. I love it. And Darrow, the main character, it's told in his first-person point of view, and I think that's done well as well. Obviously, some people don't love first-person books, but Darrow's decisions that he has to make are very interesting, and it's not always easy to be a revolutionary, and it's good that he has to make hard decisions, because if it was always so easy, so black and white, so obvious which path he should go down, it wouldn't be as realistic of a revolution in story. And obviously it's fantasy, it's in space, whatever, whatever. It's not, like, realistic, but the choices, the decisions, the paths and different forks in the road that he maybe can or maybe can't take are realistic. And, oh man, the end. Jeez, the end of Golden Sun. I've got to get to Morningstar immediately because I need to figure out what's going to happen. Up next, all right, guys, <laughs> this is a meme at this point, but I will be reading Wheel of Time book three. I promise. I could insert a video of me saying I promise to read Wheel of Time book three for that last month as well, but seriously, I will read it. I know I said I liked the first two books as a friend <laughs> in uh, my last video, um, which is true, and it is tough for me to commit to a series that I'm not loving, especially if the series is this long. I'll definitely give it another go right now and see how I feel after reading this book. Uh, and it's not like the first two books were bad. I liked the endings and stuff, but after a certain point, after a couple books, 
it's like these characters aren't resonating with me they haven't really been resonating with me i, I don't know <laughs> how much potential do i actually see with wheel of time and with me loving wheel of time like rand like he's fine bland rand as i've said in the past um matt perrin whatever the the women characters obsess with like who they're gonna marry even though they're in like a group that like doesn't really marry so it's weird that they're talking about it so much love and romance and stuff like that is like normal human emotions but i feel like it's taking up kind of a lot of time let me just continue on and see what happens up next i don't have the sequel for this yet but the Grace of King sequel. I'm not even sure what it's called. I can't remember, but book two of The Dandelion Dynasty by Ken Liu. Uh, I know this is going to be a big book. I'm going to have to have quite a bit of time to finish it, but I really loved book one and actually kind of similar to Robin Hobb. This felt like a bit of a history book, but this feels more like it's written by a historian rather than written as an autobiography, if that makes any sense. But yeah, I mean, they're both complete fantasy worlds. I'm very excited to get to book two. I'm not even sure where it'll go, if there'll be a time jump between book one and book two. I felt like book one, The Grace of Kings, was a pretty self-contained story, so I was happy taking a break for a couple months, but I'm definitely ready to get back into the world, and I definitely want to be ready for book four when it comes out in April, I think. So yeah, very exciting. Also, I'll be reading and continuing the series with Jolene, because we read the first one together, and yeah, I'm just very excited to continue on. Next, we have The Heroes by Joe Abercrombie, which is another book I do not have a copy of, but I will be reading this with Joanna, and I'm very excited to be buddy reading things with Joanna again, and I'm excited to be reading more Abercrombie. I'm definitely not like this huge Abercrombie fan or anything, but I know there's some big Abercrombie fans out there, but I like him, and I like a lot of his characters. I think his character work might be a little bit overstated, but it's good. And this will be a pretty fast-paced story, I think. I think it's a battle that takes place over a few days, and it's a standalone. So I'm assuming we're going to have some new main characters while also seeing a lot of recurring characters. Joe Abercrombie is known for... Um, having a lot of his characters go from book to book. So yeah, I'm excited for that. Yeah, even though this is a standalone, I think you should probably read First Law first. We'll see what Joe Abercrombie can come up with in his grim dark world. Okay, lastly, boom, The Color of Law by Richard Rothstein. So this is my nonfiction book that I will be reading with Kate in my Discord and Master Sal and whoever else wants to read it in my Discord. So this is a book about housing discrimination along racial lines in the United States. This uh, on the cover is a map of Baltimore in Maryland. And basically, this is how institutionally there are white neighborhoods and black neighborhoods and how they got separated and divided over the last few decades. Obviously, housing discrimination uh, became illegal to do it explicitly, but our neighborhoods are still fairly segregated and our cities are still pretty segregated. So this book kind of explores why that is, uh, what legally, institutionally, uh, whether it's through banking, the courts, etc., why that is the case. And I will learn a lot, I'm pretty sure. And also, I've been more interested in city planning, which is kind of weird, but I've been thinking about why certain countries have good public transportation, why some countries do not, why some countries have high-speed rail, why while we do not. And obviously part of it comes from investing and part of it comes from car lobbyists wanting everyone to have a car. And to do that, the best way to do that is to lobby politicians to undermine public transportation. And then stuff like that ties in to racial injustice as well, uh, because it is harder to have a car if you are in poverty and there's definitely been institutionally things and barriers that have made it difficult for 
African Americans in the United States to accumulate wealth. And that can affect things like food deserts, where people in certain neighborhoods can't go to a grocery store to buy food or fresh produce and stuff. Um, they can go to like a gas station or something, but you know, not like an actual grocery store. And yeah, this book might tie some of those threads that have been, you know, formed in my mind. It might tie some of those together. Hopefully, maybe not. Um, but yeah, there, I, city planning YouTube channels, like not just bikes, Adam something and um, Echo Gecko. I'll link some of these. They're interesting they're like way more interesting than i thought they'd be or at least to me so yeah check those out if you're a weird nerd like i am and i mean we're all on booktube so we're all kind of nerds right but yeah i didn't really talk about color of law too much but i mean that's what tbrs are for i don't know what's going to be in this book really so uh we'll find out together i guess if you want to read this with me join my discord and yeah that's everything like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Oh, I'm sorry. One more thing. Um, hopefully I get to Cytonic, or at least the novellas before Cytonic. We'll see, though. I'm like 50-50 on whether or not I'll have time or um, the motivation to read that much this month, but we will see, hopefully.